This is happiness to be everything at once. Be unblinded, be unlearned, be unbridled and unburned. Hey everyone, and welcome back to a brand new episode and a brand new week of Mood Prep. My name is Dave Nixon, and uh, firstly, a big thank you to all the preppers in the Mood Prep online group. Um, I put in a poll there of some content of like, what do you guys want to hear a little bit more of, um, with a couple of options, and uh, you came back with, actually it was almost really even across the three options that I gave you, um, and then uh, Norm chucked in a couple of uh, couple of extra options there as well. So, we... Um, the resounding yes was to go into the understanding the archetypes, All right? So often I'll talk about archetypes and shadow personalities, uh, and it's, it's effectively a Jungian concept. I think Freud went into a little bit as well, but Jungian really sort of pulled it apart from a psychoanalytical standpoint. Um, I constantly talk about a book called King, Warrior, Magician, Lover that I really recommend to people, um, and uh, you would have heard me reference many times before, and I think that's a book that's, that's so crucial at this point in time, and it's so crucial for so many men to read that as well, um, and uh, it's sort of like understanding that I'll share these archetypes, and I'll, I'll make mention of both the masculine and the feminine within them, right? But where this book, King, Warrior, Magician, Lover, comes from, the, the four archetypes of the, the feminine is actually, and there's more archetypes depending on what you want to read, but the four of them uh, is queen, mother, wise woman, lover. And so the, the interesting thing around these concepts is like you're not one, you're not a king or a magician or a this. These are all archetypes that are parts of you. And uh, the way that we yield a healthy masculine society is actually learning how to understand anger and understand masculinity not to shun it and say it's bad um it's the same thing as a femininity it's exactly the same thing it's understanding it that's what emotional intelligence comes from if you pull the word intelligence back far enough it's actually comes from the word understanding which means emotional understanding right so it's it's, it's quite fascinating so i'm going to go through today and talk about the king and the shadow archetypes of the king and uh as always if you've got a few questions of these jump on the mood prep online um, Facebook group, so just search in Facebook, Mood Prep Online, it'll come up as a closed group, just ask to uh, to join and then I'll accept and then from there, chat away and ask away and I'm happy to, um, I think I actually put this book in there last week as well, so cool. So the, the king, tyrant and the weakling, so let's talk about this for a moment. The, the archetype here of the king is quite fascinating, so it's looking at the person, uh, the part of us that is happy to make the decisions, right? And what I mean by that, it's like, it's the person that creates, uh, gathers all the information, right? All the information and a, a true centered king is a person who's going to make sure that they're making the decision that's best for not only them, but for the people that are in their immediate immediate sort of um, community. Now, I was speaking to a, uh, a client one time and in, um, in, uh, one of my league, a league of extraordinary gentlemen, and he was saying that, I said, what, what, what is it to be a man? Like, you know, to explain it to me. He goes, well, it's making decisions that's for the betterment of the tribe and not worrying about whether you're going to be liked or not. And I thought that was a very interesting comment. I'm like, that's pretty simple. And it's actually quite effective because it's, it's looking at it going, I may not be liked for these decisions, but I'm going to make them because I know that long term, it's going to be a better decision to do. And uh, I think that's a, it's a really hard thing to swallow, especially because a lot of us want to be seen as nice and liked and not just men and women, it's men and women. And uh, we want to show up and make sure that people think nice of us. And so we go, oh, I'll make a decision or I'll let you make the decision or, you know, it's sort of fall into this habit almost of going, what's the best thing to happen? What's the best thing to do? But also, will people like that? Because I don't want to offend anyone. It's like being offended doesn't, doesn't make the person right. And this is something that's really crucial is that to be centered in our kingship or our queenship is that we have to be able to gather the information and make the decision that's best for not only us, but, but for the community that's in our instant uh, or rather in a community that we're, we're in and, and make sure that the health and well-being of that, right, the whole of that. And this is what's really interesting with the whole win-win situation. People go, 
stay away from win-lose situations and look for win-win situations. And that's both yes and no because win-win is first and second person. Win-win-win is first, second, and the community. And so we need to look for more win-win-win situations, right? And so being centered in your kingship or queenship is really the ability to make sure that you can make decisions that are going to be for the betterment long term. Being centered, being calm. Uh, the person that I look at with this, and and if you read the book, and I think probably in Jungian's writings as well, as well, he, he'll talk about how it's it's actually important to identify particular symbols that you would look up. This is the whole idea of praying to Buddha, or you know, in other religions as well. It's like you're praying, you're you're honoring that which is in you. You're honoring the the archetype of Jesus within you. You're honoring Buddha. The ability to be quite, you know, Zen introspective within you, and so the 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 king that I look up to in this is actually Marcus Aurelius, who is the Stoic emperor, um, and uh, that's the person that I go, okay, well, he's able to be calm through all the wretched things that he had to go through, and here, you know, if I can honor that which is in with, within me, then I too can move into that kingship, and so understanding this allows us to be able to look at what a balanced king and queen is. We also need to look at what the shadows. Now, the shadow variations is an inflated shadow and an isolated shadow of our king and or queen, right? And so the the, the inflated, right? This is a person who is... When I say inflated, you may think ego, and you know you can run with that. Maybe the super ego. Um, a lot of the time, the the inflated king actually they're called the tyrant, right? So the inflated king is called the tyrant, but they're they're somewhat maybe inflated by the super ego. But sometimes it's they're they're inflated by fear, and so you'll often find tyrants are actually really scared. And this is where you know you might get the person who is probably over aggressive and trying to dominate you. It's because they themselves cannot control themselves, and so it's much easier to control you than it is to control themselves. And so they may have it's the whole um, uh, "don't do what I uh, do what I say, not what I do." It's like whoa, 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 whoa that, that's called control, buddy. That's not it at all. That's not leadership. That's not true kingship. And so it's understanding that that tyrant is trying to yield a response out of you or maybe you're doing this to someone else, this is saying that out of the thousands of people over time that will listen to this podcast, there are going to be tyrant people that are, that are more inflated shadow variations of the king. right? Someone, someone's going to rock up listening to this and be like, oh, yeah, I know people like that. It's like, yeah, mate, fucking look in the mirror. What The best thing to do with all this information that I'm sharing is to take it, and rather than putting this shirt on other people, put it on yourself first and see how it fits. And if something kind of connects, it's like, fuck, okay, I've got something to work through there, right? And so this tyrant is finding it easier to try and manipulate a control or uh, through anger or aggression or threat because they it's the only way that they can control something. And often this stuff is actually like a, a lot of these shadows and, and also kingship comes from like a lot of parenting and childhood situations as, as well as, um, you know, response uh, opportunities for responsibility. And so the... The idea of becoming a tyrant and trying to control things via aggression is because they feel completely out of control. And you may find this in the sense that they um, had an aggressive father. Where they, they could never win. They could never win no matter what happened. Like It's, it's, like, it's the whole bully um, in The Simpsons. What's his name? Months. And... Um, the whole thing is that he couldn't go home and he was never in control and there was this you know, absent father. It makes so much fucking sense. And so when he went to school, he was just trying to completely tyrant everyone. And it's just like, that's what's going on for so many people on another variation. And so the tyrant often comes from this ability that they, they, they lack control in their life. And so you know, there's plenty of other sort of facets to it, but that's an easy way to be able to see this scope and see that that's like, oh, do this or else. Or else what? Like, what, you're going to cry? You're going to force me to do it? Like, is this slavery we're in now? So th that's interesting seeing that sort of inflated variation of the king, right? So the isolated is actually called the weakling. Now, the weakling is literally somebody who is unable to make decisions. Now, someone who is unable to make decisions, maybe they had a a dominant mother growing up or someone like that and they were sort of always passed over and they're usually dating someone who is uh, or with someone who's probably sort of not hyper-aggressive but over-assertive 
and they'll be the, you know, for lack of a better term, they'll be seen as a beta male. And um, what's really interesting with this is that they're, the, the thing about passing over the, the decision-making process means that they never have to actually um, make the decisions, but therefore it's not their fault. They're not, they're not accepting responsibility and they can keep up their victimhood status, right? And this is the idea that I continually say that was said by Jordan Peterson, right? Which is, a harmless man is not a good man. A good man is a very, very, very dangerous man that has it under voluntary control because a weakling is a victim. Someone who is harmless doesn't mean that they're moralistic, right? Doesn't mean that they have virtue. So the idea is that for, for, the, for the genuine masculine, for the genuine man, is to make sure that you can become as dangerous as possible, but, but you do that like in the sense of understanding virtue is, is the most important strength of all. And so the same thing is for the mother. Now you come up, up up against you know a queen. Let's say the queen within a woman, and you meet a woman, and you're like, "Fucking hell, that person is scary and exciting all in one." It's like you have just met a queen. She needs no validation from you. She works hand in hand with her king, and she moves forward in that process, right? And so they also have the queen also has the same tyrant and weakling shadow forms, and this is why it's so crucial to find balance within this and understand that the king is the it's like the brain, it's the head. Right, it's the decision-making process. So this weakling shadow is the inflated shadow. They don't want to take responsibility. They want to be sort of told what to do. Now it doesn't mean that someone in your job doesn't mean that every single person needs to be the CEO because some people just don't suit that. Some people can still be king within their own life and be the person that's at the front desk. There is or queen at the front desk. It doesn't matter where you work. It just means you don't roll over just because somebody else is having a little tyrant fucking tantrum. You stand up to that because no one, you don't treat people like that, so you're not going to have people treat you like that. And that's the best thing the fucking tyrant needs to hear. What the tyrant wants is weaklings, but what they crave is some sort of responsibility. It's interesting. So guys, uh, that's a quick little, what, 12, I think it's my longest podcast for this, 12 minute snapshot in what the, your, your sort of king, queen, and your weakling, and your, your tyrant sort of archetypes and shadows, I, variations are like. Look, I hope you really enjoyed this, um, and uh, if you listen to this and you're in the Mood Prop group, I'd love to hear your comments on there as well. So once you listen to this, jump in the group and uh, drop me a line and let me know what you think. Otherwise, if you're not in the Mood Prep group already, jump on Facebook, search Mood Prep online, it'll pop up, I already said at the start. I'll accept you because we'll be friends. Well, not really friends, but you get it. Not official. And if you also found this very interesting, I would love it if you would share it with a friend. It would mean the world to me and hopefully the world to them. If you found this um, and you want more references, then jump in the Mood Prep group. Otherwise, you can also find me on YouTube. Uh, at the moment, it's Dave Nixon. I'm trying to get up to 100 subscribers so I can change my name so I'm easy to find. I've got 48 at the moment. So if you can find me on there, please subscribe. I'd mean the world to me. Otherwise, Instagram, at DDNix. Facebook, Dave Nixon. Team, thank you very much for listening. As always, peace and pizza. Kick today in the dick. Slay the dragon. I'll see you soon. To be everything at once. Be unblinded, be unlearned, be unbridled and unburned.